In this section of the tutorial, we're going to continue the editing process. At the end of the last tutorial, we'd got to a point where I didn't show it, but I'd actually saved the file and called it for portraitedit1.crv3d. That's the starting point for this tutorial. You can see where we'd got to in the 3D view, where we'd been doing some sculpting on the individual components to start to blend out some of the shapes, and we've been adjusting the relationship between different components by using their order in the component tree, their combine mode, and starting to tilt and fade them to get some parts to go in front of others. In this section, I'd like to concentrate on continuing this editing process, but we want to focus on two particular techniques. One is the technique that I use for modeling the eyes, and the second is the technique I use for getting the hair to overlay the face. Firstly, let's look at the technique for the eyes. Before we do that, once we've started to get a lot of components and vectors like this, I often find it useful to move all the components onto a particular 2D layer. To do this, I would just select them all from the list by selecting the top one and holding shift down and selecting the bottom, right mouse click, say so move to layer, I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to call it components, I'm going to hit OK. Because of the order in the list, that's going to obscure everything before it, so what I'm going to do is use the arrow key to just move that up so it's just below the bitmap layer. That means that all my components are now on that components layer, all the vectors are on subsequent layers so it's easy for us to see them and select them. If I switch them off, I'm going to just switch on the components layer. And what I can do in this case is say I want to move that to the back if it's obscuring things so we can see what's going on there. Now I want to focus on the eyes, and so I'm going to switch on a couple of layers to help me with that, the eyes layer and the eyeballs layer. I'm going to make sure the components layer is still selected though. Let's go ahead and tile the windows vertically. What I need to do first for the eyes is to punch out these areas so that I actually have holes. Second, I'm going to place eyeballs in the holes. I actually like to model the eye as if it was somewhat of a real eye, not a ball, but at least a dome because we're representing it in bar relief. First, I've got two components I'm going to need to punch out for the eyes, the main base face shapes and the detail face shapes. So let's go into the modeling tab, select the detail face shapes here, and then I want to go ahead and select the eye um, outline vectors. So with those selected, I'm going to say that I want to clear area of that component inside those selected vectors, which it's done. Next, I'm going to select the base face shape and do the same operation. I want to deselect so I get the selection order correct. Select the base face shape, shift and select these two outlines, make sure I get the right vectors and do the same operation to clear that area and effectively to punch those out. So now I've got quite steep verticals um, in there, which is where I'm going to place these eyeballs. I'm going to go ahead for a second and just hide everything and we'll model the eyes and I'll show you then how we can adjust these afterwards. I'm going to do the eyes separately because I want to be able to manipulate them as individual components. So I'm going to select this outline here first. I'm going to call this left eye. Even though it's the right eye of the subject, as I look at it, it's the left eye. So that makes it easy for me to understand what's going on. I'm going to take a 45 degree angle in this case. And we'll say no limit and see what that gives us. So there we can see we've got a pretty um, hefty dome, which is just fine. Zoom in. For the pupil of the eye, what I like to do is select these two vectors here and basically punch those down a little bit. So I use a um, an angular profile, normally something around a 50 degree angle, but negative because I want it to go into the eyeball. And then I limit to height, so I don't scale to height, I want to limit it at a flat depth and probably something only around 0 0.02. So if I hit add, you can see what that does is just take the dome shape and punch down at an angle that um, though between those two shapes I've selected there. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit Start New Component. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to make this round, 45 degrees, no limit. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and change that to right eye. And then again, I'm going to select 
these two inner vectors angle something like 50 degrees limit to height 0 0.02 then I want to add that to my current shape this at the moment I forgot to put the negative so you can see it's up instead of down if I change that to a negative now it's going to go into my shape which is exactly what I'm looking for so if I close that what I want to do now is go ahead and switch on um, all of the components again except the hair because I'm going to deal with the hair in a second so I'm going to say show all but this okay so currently the eyes are at the bottom of the list and they're merging and they're adding to what we've got which is why it looks a little odd there you can see also that in the original image the eyeball didn't go all the way to the edge so what I do want to do is model this piece here if I want to add that to this component I could go ahead and select that component go to the, contra uh, the, the create shape select that say 90 degree and we'll just merge that in and make that's a little too high Okay, so I just want that to fill in the corner of the eye there and that's just merge that in with that selected component. Now what I want to do is select both of these and change their combined mode to merge so they stop adding on the top. Then I need to bring them up so that they're just below the lids of the eyes. Easiest way to do that is either to tilt them or just use a base height. If I, I have a quick look with the cursor at the depth here I can see it's about 0 0.1, 0 0.12 so for the right eye I would say change the properties and maybe put in a base height and try 0.1 see how that looks, that's a little bit high sticking through so back that off to 0.07 that looks good, I can select the other eye and again have a look here, try and get a rough idea of the depth 0.2 so again I'll come in and put point 0.2 so this is one of the reasons these eyes have been done separately because they're at different heights that's definitely too high so I'm going to put in point 0.19 or point 0.18 now if I find that it starts to look okay at one part but it starts still sticking out the other I can always use the tilt or the fade instead so what I may do is back this off down to point 0.1 so that it's dead below there and then tilt it up across the eye so I say tilt, set anchor come from here to here 3 degrees, a little bit more and basically just keep playing with that until I'm happy with the size, shape and position that I've got so that's the way I would approach the eyes is to punch out holes and then create the eyeball and that gives you a lot of ability to edit and manipulate and smooth and individually um, play with the eyes. The second editing function I want to show you here is, the, is for the hair. If we switch on the hair we can see that currently this is adding on top of the head which is fine apart from the fact that I've got the crease of the head involved in this but also on this side of the face I don't want the hair to be in front I want it to be behind so what I really want to do is create a shape that I can add the hair onto where it's in front of the head here and gently um, blends back and here is not in front of the head at all the best way for me to do this is to create an underlying shape for the hair to sit on that's derived from the shapes that are below it so in this case the shapes that are below it are the detailed face shapes and the base face shape so I'm going to take those and we'll actually hide and we'll go ahead and hide all sorry click the right option hide all I'm going to switch on those two items we can see they make up the part that I want the hair to sit on top of so I'm going to take those two components select to the top one, control to select just the second one I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say duplicate I don't want to destroy my originals but I do want a copy of them so they're duplicated in the list directly below their originals and I'm going to hit control and um, I'm going to hit the, the right mouse click and select group or I could use control G so that's now created a group here which I'm going to move down the list and I'm going to set the combined mode to merge 
Okay, so I can see I've got three components switched on. If I switch that off, I still see the same thing. And that's because basically this is a copy of these two, but in a single group. What I want to do now is make an edit of this copy and create the underlying shape I need for the hair. So there I can see how the hair, where the hair is going to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do is switch this off. I'm going to maximize this, look down the z-axis, and we're going to go into the sculpting tools. This is going to bake this. It's okay. This is a copy of those other components. What I want to do on the right side of the head as I look at it is to move it in so that the hair sits behind when it's on top of here, and on the left side of the head move the shape out. So I'm going to switch off preserve transparency. I'm going to switch on the smooth, very, very high strength, and just smooth out this side of the head and across the top here and on the other side here I'm going to go ahead and um, just smudge this in. Now what I'm going to do at this stage is just pause the recording for a second, go ahead and finish my sculpting and then describe what I've done to you just in order to save a little bit of time. So now we've jumped forward uh, a few minutes and you can see what I've done here looks very odd. I've basically extended this side of the head out and I've pushed this side of the head in. If we hit OK and take those changes and switch on the hair I can start to get a better idea of what I'm trying to do here. So now what's happening if we look at this we can see that the hair is going to be added on to this shape I've created. So I can see that's good here. It's going to flow down nicely behind and here it should tuck in behind the face when we start to um, merge the face back in with it. What I don't like is this top part where it's transitioning down here so I would want to clean that up a bit. So I'm going to select that, go back into the sculpting tools and just go ahead and smudge that out so I've got a, a nicer transition as it comes down and into the behind. Hit keep, hit OK. So there's my underlying shape for the hair. What I should do at this point in time is crop it back to the hair so I can get rid of the rest of this. So I'm going to double click select the face, shift and double click to select the hair, go to the clear area of selected component outside selected vectors, in this case it's a selected component with the hair. So now if I switch off the hair you can see I've still got this underlying shape but just crop back to the hair. I'm actually going to rename this group. It's ended up with a long name so I'm going to call this hair UL shape for underlying shape. Okay. So what we can see now if we switch on the base face shape what I'm going to need to do is move it down in the list here. I'm going to switch that on there. And if I set that to merge, you can see how that's going to work with the hair, how it's pulling the hair to be up and over the areas we pulled out, and then pulling the hair back under in these areas around the back here. Now that was just for visual comparison. I'd still need the base face shape to be back in its original place in the list and set to add so that it corresponds correctly with the things above it. So what I'm going to need to do in this case is take the underlying shape for the hair, shift and select the main hair, and switch off the base face shape and I'm going to right mouse click and group those two together and that's just and now if we switch everything on we should see what's happening with the hair there is exactly what I would like to. So by taking that copy of the face shapes, by moving it down the list, using the smudge and smooth tools in the sculpting to blend that out, pull and push the, the, this shape out this way, push this shape in and then sit the hair on top of that, I've started to get the correct relationship that I want between where the hair is sitting on top of the head here, but going behind the head here. So at this stage, that pretty much concludes the second round of editing on the shapes. What we're going to do is save this file and then we'll continue in the next section where we start to get into the more specific detailed sculpting and start to actually blend these different components together.
Here I'm just going to finish by saving this and we'll call it 5 Portrait Edit 2 and that will be the starting point for the next tutorial.